The previous video went over the details of the trig substitutions. Let me now use them to actually solve some integrals. Here is an integral of the type in question. The integrand is the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. This needs a little bit of setup to make it fit the pattern. I need a squared minus x squared. So I need to get the 4 out from in front of the x squared. How do I do that? Well, I can write the 1 as 4 over 4, and then I can factor 4 out of both terms. And then I can factor the 4 out of the square root, and now I have an a squared minus x squared, where a is 1 half so that a squared is 1 quarter. The trig substitution for this pattern, a squared minus x squared, is 1 half sine theta, so that dx is 1 half cos theta d theta. In the substitution, I'll also work out what happens to the square root term. It will become 1 half, 1 quarter minus sine squared theta over 4, and I can factor the 1 quarter out, then use the trig identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 to turn this into 1 half cosine theta. These are all the pieces. Now I want to switch everything in the substitution. The square root becomes 1 half cos theta, the dx because one becomes 1 half cos theta d theta, and then I simplify. What I get is the integral of cos squared theta. As I did with this integral in the first video for this week, I use a half angle identity. This is why I did the whole first video for this week. I need the trig integrals to do the integrals that come out of the trig substitutions. Cos squared turns into 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2, then I split the integral up into two pieces, both of which can be done, and I get this result. Now I need to reverse the trig substitution. Often this can be the trickiest part. x equals 1 half sine theta was the substitution, and if I solve for theta in that, I get theta is arc sine of 2x. So that lets me replace theta with arc sine 2x. Sine 2 theta can't be replaced directly, so I need to use another trig identity. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, and I can replace sine theta with 2x using the first part of the substitution, and I can replace cos theta with 2 times the square root term using the other part of the substitution that I already calculated. Replacing all those parts gives me this expression. Finally, I can simplify all of this a bit, moving one of the 2s into the square root and cancelling off two more. This finishes the process. The trig, the trig substitution makes a doable trig integral. I did finish the trig integrals using the techniques from the first video, and I did some more hard work to reverse the substitution. Here's another example. This has the form of x squared minus a squared. The pattern for this type is a secant substitution, so x equals 3 secant theta, with dx equals 3 secant theta, tan theta, d theta. The square root term becomes 3 tan theta. These are the three pieces of the substitution. And here is the substitution. All the pieces are changed into pieces involving theta. There are some simplifications to make. I can cancel out the two threes to make 1 over 27 into 1 over 3 in front. 1 secant cancels as well to give the integral of tan squared theta over secant squared theta. This is a trig integral that is tr well treated by changing everything into sines and cosines. I get cancellations, leaving just sine squared, and then this is another half angle. Sine squared is 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2, and then I split this up into two integrals, both of which are doable. The result of the trig integral setup is theta over 6 minus sine 2 theta over 12 plus c. Then I need to reverse the substitution. I first change the sine 2 theta into 2 sine theta cos theta, since there is no straight reverse for sine 2 theta. However, the substitution is secant and tangent, so I also need to change the sines and cosines into secants and tangents. Tangent is sine over cos, so the sine here can become tangent times cosine, and that leaves two cosines in the numerator, which is the same as two secants in the denominator. Now I can finally reverse the substitution. The tangent term becomes the square root x squared minus 9 over 3, and the secant becomes x over 3, which leads to this. And finally, I simplify a little to get this final answer. It's pretty intense, and there are many steps in the algebra, but this is what's necessary to approach these strange square root integrals.